Hey, Perry Jeffries here, the Entrepreneur CFO, coming to you live here in Columbus, Ohio at ECDI. Super excited today, we're gonna to be presenting on cash flow, revenue, and profits. We're gonna talk about how to create profitability and small businesses uh, 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 finances, and also to give them the structure and systems that they need to be able to be successful. So with 70 to 80% of businesses failing because of not understanding their back-end financials, we're gonna equip you with the tools you need to be a successful entrepreneur. Look forward to it. All right, y'all, so um, I do have a PowerPoint prepared for us and just make sure that we're still working. Yeah, we're still doing okay. So. Um, let me introduce myself. So my name is Perry Jeffries. Um, my clients and the community know me as the entrepreneur CFO and a little background on that CFO. So it's not for a chief financial officer, as most people would uh, think it would be. My CFO is for coach, financial advisor and optimizer. And the reason we kind of evolved into this ECFO was we saw there was a huge need in the community, not just for advice, but also too for coaching because coaching and advice is a little different. So I've been in uh, the financial services, this will be my 16th year uh, as a licensed financial advisor. Uh, I'll get through some of that stuff here shortly. But I've been an entrepreneur since 1999. And um, my story, which I'm gonna share with you here, is gonna uh, kind of give you some idea why I moved into this particular direction. So uh, I'm originally from Akron, Ohio. And when I moved down here, I moved down here uh, back in 1999 to pursue a career as a personal trainer. So I was in a uh, health and fitness uh, uh, realm for a while. Then I got into real estate around 2001, okay? Uh, connected with one of my clients, got into real estate, and shot off. So I had read a bunch of books. So I had read, you know, The Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Anybody read that? You know, The Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right? Cash Flow Quadrant. Uh, one of my favorite books was uh, Multiple Streams of Income by Robert G. Allen. Um, book just blew my mind. Because coming from Akron, you know, we didn't have conversations about wealth and multiple streams of income. My parents taught me, make sure you have more than one hustle, right? So that's what they taught me, have you a B hustle, an A hustle, a C hustle, the whole nine. But, I, but we didn't have conversations around creating wealth because quite frankly, my family nor anybody in my community really knew what wealth was nor how to create it. So when I got down here and got exposed to some things, I was like, man, I'm gonna get into this real estate game. So I got into real estate and from 2001 to roughly, let's say 2007-ish, 2006, 2007, I mastered about a $4 million real estate portfolio. Um, about 25 some odd units, we were doing really well and started to kind of jump onto that, um, uh, that train of the condo conversions and things of that nature. So I was in Old Town East in that area, had a four unit building in Franklin Park, the whole nine, and was just moving and grooving. So those who know me back then know I was out here. So we had the all white Jag, the all white Navigator, popping bottles, just completely out here. And I share this story with you because from 2007 to 2009, when the market crash, and anybody remember when the market crash here, right? That stock market crash? Well, it's the stock market and the real estate market, so it was the perfect storm. I lost everything, completely broke. Then got hit with the double whammy in 2009 when I found out I was about to be a dad to not one, but two little people, right? So imagine being flat broke, Lost everything, that same Jag I used to have, Nick, you remember that bad boy with the, you know what I'm saying, with the, uh, the PKG, PKJ3 tags, yeah. So I remember holding my vanity tags in my driveway when they came and repossessed my whip. And I was just looking at my whip being pulled up the street. And it was just so crazy. So I literally had to start over from scratch. So how do you go from being a successful financial advisor, right? Successful being, hey, I had some clients who had some money with me. A successful real estate investor, to being broke. Well, here's the deal. As an entrepreneur, I was not uh, trained on how to actually maintain my cash flows and revenues and profits and things of that nature because there are some systems behind that. So that's what I'm gonna share with you is so that if you're an entrepreneur, you don't make the same mistakes I made and have to start over from scratch. Okay, so fast forward, my babies are born, 2009, we're moving here grooving. And then I jump off into um, uh, still doing what we're doing. Me and Sandrita and are working with each other over at Chase, as you mentioned before, and I'm running over there. The next thing I know, I'm being promoted, I'm being promoted, I'm being promoted, and I'm making a very healthy six-figure income, very healthy. And lo and behold, I get a call one day, 
an email one day saying, hey, can we meet with you? And I'll never forget the date. It was July 8th, 2014. And in the course of that, that meeting, they actually snatched away my entire income because that was the day that the corporation brought me in and said, hey, today's going to be your last day. We decided to part ways. So I've already taken an L in the real estate. I'd have made my way back. Now I'm out here again. So at that point in time, I chose and said to myself, I'll never allow myself to be in a position again to have to ask another person or a corporation how I'm going to take care of my family. Because when I was fired that day, my boss walked me over to my desk and we had a great relationship. So this wasn't coming from the local level. This was coming from way, way, way up top, probably someplace in New York. And I looked him in his eye and I said, hey, man, I'm supposed to take care of my family. He looked at me. and He said, Perry, I don't know. But you're sharp and I know you're going to figure it out. So it's at that point in time that I said I would never be in that position again. So that's when I said I'm going full going to this entrepreneurship space. So I'm hustling. I'm grinding. Like how many entrepreneurs we got in the building right now? That's what I'm talking about. So I'm so I'm out here in this space like, OK, I need a website. I need business cards. I need this. I need that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just I'm running full speed ahead, full speed ahead with no guidance on what I'm doing. I'm just hustling, just based on the hustle that's in me. So lo and behold, we get to that place again. It's like, huh, we've now built a pretty, you know, a visible business, but is it really profitable? OK, so I hired a coach um, probably about two years ago and um, had reached out to him. We had connected on social media. Um, he was an author, bestselling author, and, and we got connected. And I said to him, I said, hey, man, my business is not flourishing. Right. Everybody see me out here moving and grooving and all of that. But I know what the numbers are. Right. So a lot of us out here living that lie. You know, what I'm saying like, oh, I'm out here getting it. Everybody like, oh, you killing the game. Nah, let's look at them numbers. Them, num <laughs> them numbers that tell the truth real quick. Right. So I knew them numbers wasn't right. I knew I was down 30 percent from the previous year, but I was working harder. Anybody ever felt like that? Like I'm out here grinding and the, but I ain't making more money. Right. So I hired this coach. He came in, he uh, worked with me, we put together these systems. I'll give him a quick shout out. His name is Austin Nestle. His company is called 2X, where he actually brings uh, six and seven figure entrepreneurs in and help them 2X their business within 90 days. But what he was able to do for me was actually help me 5X my business. So income shot up because I hired a coach. We got some systems in place, but now we got extra money coming in. That's when you start feeling yourself. Right. <laughs> this week you start to like, oh, man, psh, we just pay that. You don't know say what? You know, so uh, but I wasn't as reckless as I was in my 30s because <laughs> I'm a dad now and I'm in a 40 plus range. Right. So um, I went to a mastermind group out in California and somebody uh, shared this concept with us called profit first. And the concept uh, throughout the whole weekend in this mastermind, they this 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 concept was shared with us in probably in a matter of like five or 10 minutes. And I'm sitting there and that's all I could think about for the rest of the mastermind group the entire weekend. Mind blown. Why? Because not only am I an entrepreneur, but I'm also a financial advisor and I love numbers. So the concept I'm going to share with you today is not a theory. This is what we're using right now. This has changed my business around. Uh, my wife, who has her own business, we implement, implement it in her company. And then I have a list of clients all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast and all kind of industries where we've actually helped them implement this process. And this will be a game changer for sure, for sure. But I wanted to tell you the story because I'm real big uh, on not just talking to talk, but walking the walk. So I just want to make sure that you're crystal clear, like I've been in your shoes. Matter of fact, I might be wearing one of y'all shoes right now. You know what I'm saying? Keeping it 100 because we still grinding. Right. But that's kind of a little backstory. So let me kind of get through this PowerPoint presentation. But before that, I should have passed these out earlier. Do me a favor. Take one of those sticky notes. Oh, thank you, sis. Take one of those sticky notes. And what I'm going to have you do is write down one question that you want to have answered before you leave here today. And I'm going to do my very best to answer that because what I didn't share with you, I was actually a former school teacher in a previous lifetime. <laughs> and I, right. And I've sat in the classroom with somebody lecturing like, what is this dude talking about? I don't want to hear this, man. I came here to learn this one thing. So my promise to you with a group this small is that you're going to walk out of here learning that one thing. Okay. Google Perry Jeffries is probably going to pop up um, here recently. 
uh, been featured on Fox 28. We have Financially Fit Fridays with Perry. That runs on Fox 28 every Friday between 10 and 1030. And a little background just on myself here. So 16 years experience in the financial service industry. I currently hold a Series 7, a Series 66, and a life, health, and annuities license. So stockbroker's license, investment license, insurance license. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, CRPC, I'm a chartered retirement planning counselor through the College of Financial Planning. So based upon the College of Financial Planning, I'm a retirement planning expert. I also have a CPFA, Certified Pension Fiduciary uh, Advisor license, well, certification. Um, something I'm really proud of is over the past, shoot, it may be two years now, I had the opportunity to work with Damon John from the Shark Tank. Y'all know Damon? FUBU, right? So I had the opportunity to be one of his ambassadors for a book he had rolled out called Rise and Grind. With that, I had access to Damon's team and whatnot in a little closed Facebook group and it's just really cool being around other like-minded individuals. Um, and I'll stop right there on Damon. Something that Damon says all the time, and we, I've heard it in a live speech um, out at the college and also to uh, kind of just connecting with the team. And if you read his books, either The Power of Broke or The Rise and Grind, which I recommend y'all get, especially The Power of Broke. I go to that one all the time. But in that Power of Broke piece, he says, most entrepreneurs or small businesses think they need access to capital. Anybody ever kind of been in that space like, yo, if I just have some extra coins, I can make this pop, right? <laughs> yeah. What Damon says, nah, it's not access to capital that, capital that you need, it's access to financial intelligence. Because I promise you this, I've seen it. I've done it, I've seen it. You may get that capital that you need, and if you don't know exactly what to do with that paper, it will be gone and you will be back looking for more capital. So capital isn't supposed to be a Band-Aid for a bad financial decision. Capital is supposed to be an investment which is gonna help you grow your business, right? So he says financial intelligence, so just quick plug for Damon. Also too, um, I'm a certified speaker and coach with John Maxwell, if you're not familiar with John Maxwell, maybe uh, in a top five leading authorities with respects to leadership, 21 irrefutable laws of uh, leadership, 15 valuable laws of growth, and also too, which is really um, the one I'm most excited about, which I'm gonna share with you guys today. I am a certified profit first professional. So I'm not just giving you what I think you should do. I'm giving you the real deal. I've gone through the, going through the certification process uh, uh, with that group. So it's actually a book out called Profit First. And I'll have something here for you at the end where I can get you access to a couple of chapters if you want to check it out for free. Okay. So that's just a little background. I really don't want to talk about me, but I just want to let you let y'all know I'm kind of official. <laughs> I got those questions. They hot off the press. Pass to the uh, group in front of you and then that way they get all the way up here. <clears throat> so the goal of Profit First is to eradicate entrepreneurial profit, uh, poverty. So the issue, Sandra already kind of spoke to this, is that 83% of small businesses are broke. So let's define broke. Broke is one to two months away from having to close their doors, right? So what I've seen in my space, I've seen companies with phenomenal revenues you know, I, I can show you a statement where a company is bringing in $55,000 a month, $100,000 a month, was begging for a $20,000 loan just to keep the lights on. So understand something, it's something to be said for that many small businesses to be struggling. So don't feel bad if you're part of that 83%, because you're really part of the majority. We're gonna give you some information today so we can move out of being in that 83%. Okay. so. Profit first formula. <clears throat> Let me get my questions here. I want y'all to write that down and grain it in your head. So typically when you're in business, you believe that your profits are what's left over after your expenses. So you got money coming in. So you have $5,000 coming in. You had, you know, $4,000 going out and you're like, OK, I had a thousand dollars profit. That is a lie that all of us have been told, because when we go to file them taxes. It's usually a different story. You may go to file your taxes and your taxes be like, OK, well, you weren't really that profitable, but you owe this huge tax bill. And you're like, what in the world just happened? OK, so 
our process is we go sales minus profit equals expenses. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, a, a complete flip based upon what your traditional accountants are gonna tell you, right? And we'll get into that here a little bit. But make sure you write that down. Sales minor profit. So our ideal is this, and tell me if, if by just a show of hands if you're feeling me on this. Anybody in here in business to make a profit? Right? Okay. So shouldn't that be like the first thing you should address? But we don't. Because usually it's bring the money in, got to pay these bills. If anything left over, I can go buy a cheeseburger or something, right? How about we take the profits on the first end because we should always be putting the most important thing first. So family, health, your business. None of us are in business to go out of business and struggle with our businesses. So how about we take that profit on the, first, on the front end? So first thing with profit first is this Parkinson's law. Author and historian, C. Northcote Parkinson theorized that our demand for resource increases to meet the supply of it. Example, toothpaste. So anybody ever, well, I'm, I'm sure everybody has experienced this, right? So you get that fresh tube of toothpaste, right? You got that fresh tube of that Colgate, that Crest, whatever you're feeling, and you put it on that, tooth, on that toothbrush, fresh, 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 fresh tube, right? You fill that bad boy up. What happens when that toothpaste tube starts to get a little empty? You start to twist and turn on that bad boy. You're trying to get every last drop of it out, right? Right? That's Parkinson's law. So what Parkinson's law is simply stating is this. If I gave you two weeks to complete a project, you'll spend all two weeks completing a project. If I gave you 10 weeks to complete a project, you'll spend all 10 weeks completing a project. If I told you that same project was due in 24 hours, you could get it done in 24 hours. So what happens is we spend money from a habitual standpoint because it's available, right? So that's the first piece with Parkinson's. So let me show this to you here real quick. This is your business, right? You got money coming in. Got these coins right here. Boom. So you done went through, you know what I'm saying? Somebody bought something for you. They bought a t-shirt for you. Bought a service. Boom. They did something. All the money's coming in. So you got all the money in this income jar. What's going to happen with that? You're going to look at that money. You're going to look at that bank account. And if it's, you know, 5000 in there, 3000 in there, you're going to find out a way to do this. Spend all of it. Because that's human behavior. If it's available, I'm going to spend it. So it kind of goes to, I kind of tell my clients this. If you think about Christmas or Thanksgiving or any dinner for that matter, we're programmed to what? Finish everything that's on your plate, right? Well, what we do is help our clients create small plates so they're not finishing everything. So we'll get back to it in a second. But Parkinson's law. So next part of the overview, you got bank balance accounting. So does anybody in here know how to read? A profit and loss statement? Used to, right? Anybody here know how to read an income statement? Got two, two out the room. Anybody here know how to read a cash flow statement? No. So we got like two or three, right? But we got all these entrepreneurs in the room. Well, if you can't read those, those uh, statements, you don't know the health of your business. But guess what? You ain't got time to learn that. Because why are you trying to grow your business? Now, anybody here know how to log on to an app on their phone and look at a bank statement? Everybody know how to do that, right? So if that's something that we already do and we're already proficient in doing that, I can pull up my phone and be like, huh, hey, babe, we only got $20 in the account. We're about to go make these peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Like, so we can do that because you don't really have the time to try to learn how to read those things. So what we're doing is now we're going to leverage what you already know how to do. So most entrepreneurs don't understand financial or accounting statements, but you do understand how to know whether or not you have money in your bank account, correct? Boom. So what we're going to do is not change your habits. We're going to leverage those habits that you already have. So I don't know about y'all, but I'll look at my bank accounts 
How, how often y'all look at y'all bank accounts? Every, every day? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. In the morning? Let me see what's popping in the evening, <laughs> right? At lunchtime, let me see what's going on at lunchtime, right? You know what I'm saying? No, no, what, what is this, right? So think about it. Just let that sink in for a second. The majority room, 83% of the room, have no idea how to read a profit and loss statement. No idea how to need, read, read a revenue or a cash flow statement. But we check our accounts all the time. So how about we learn how to use that habit now to create profits in a business? And I'm going to show that to you, Okay. Because what happens is, without leveraging these habits, you're gonna have a temptation to overspend. So all the money is going into this account. And I'm not gonna fuss at y'all putting on, nobody on the spot because I know everybody who said there's an entrepreneur in here has a business account and not putting money into their personal, right? right. Ain't, nobody, ain't, ain't nobody putting no money into their personal account. They just, to your business account. All right, that's what's up. Everybody shook their head. Yeah, because they like just do my clowners for sure. So, so great job on that. So this is, so this is, you know, no, no, no doubt. No, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We want to see that. want to see that. So I, I run into it all the time. Even with successful entrepreneurs, all the money is going into that income account. And that's usually a personal account, might be a business account. But nonetheless, well, if it goes in there, it's like, man, well, that was business revenue, wasn't it? But let me go ahead and spend that on the groceries. Let me spend that on the daycare. Let me spend that on X, Y, Z. Well, are those business expenses that you're spending the money on? So effectively, you're spending your business revenue on personal items. Imagine if you were a publicly traded company and this was the money that the business was generating. And somebody was going in like, man, let me just take some of that, man, because I need to go on vacation real quick. So let me take that out. If you're on a board of directors, you're like, no, you can't do that. But we do it all the time. OK. And it's normal because it's a natural behavior, because if it's in here, we're going to find a way to spend it. All right. So. The name of the book is to, uh, uh, Profit First, Michael McCollowitz. Profit First, transfer your business from a cash eating monster to a money making machine. So check it. Let's just jump right into it real quick. Traditional accounting method sales. So that's money that you're bringing in. That's revenue, all right? Minus expenses equal profit. We're not doing that anymore. We're going sales minus profit equal expenses. Why? Because we're in business to be profitable, which means we want to be prof start being profitable day one, all right? Okay, so this is how we do it. <clears throat> this income account, everybody still with me? So this is where the money is deposited and this is your business account because we all have business accounts and so don't put money into our personal accounts, right? All right, back. So we good, we good there. So all the money flows in. Boom. What we're going to establish is a profit account. This is not the same as your business account. This now is a business savings account. Profit account. We're going to establish a tax account because guess what happens when you make money? You owe taxes. And guess who going to always get paid? The our uncle, Uncle Sammy, IRS is always going to get love. You can't go to him and be like, man, I spent uh, what? No, no, we need that. So they're going to get that. So we got a tax account, another savings account. You now have an owner's compensation account. So. If your business is bringing in revenue, is that your revenue or the business revenue? That's the business revenue. You need to pay yourself a paycheck. Y'all don't have to show, I don't, you don't have to do a show of hands, but how many people in here are paying themselves a paycheck or are they just taking that business, that business, the money that comes in this, and that's their personal too. So it came in through the business, but that's the, per, that, that's the personal spending account too. Now, we wanna establish a paycheck, so this is gonna be a checking account. And guess what we have left? Operating expense, which could be employees and things of that nature, or anything that comes out of that account that you need to grow your business. So this could be your apps, this could be um, your office space, your membership here at ECDI, whatever the case may be, that's coming out of your operating expense. Why? Because that's a business expense. Y'all with me so far? Yeah. All right, so now we got these in here. The percentages we have in there are just random percentages. Everybody's percentages are going to be different. 
right? We do, a, we do an assessment for you so you get an idea of what your percentages are. And then what we do is start increasing that to get to a certain level. But for the sake of conversation, let's say that this is your percentages. 6% towards profit, 8% towards taxes, reading this upside down, 3% towards owner's comp, comp, and then operating expenses, you know, 83%. So now the money came in, and then you did this. Well, I need to make sure my business is profitable. Let me throw some paper in there. That's the profit account. We know we're going to own Uncle Sam this paper. Tax account, right? You know what? What's the next one right here? Uh, 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 owner's compensation. Let me give myself a paycheck and only use that account for my personal expenditures. Boom. And then guess what? The business is going to have uh, uh, bills. Empl this could be employees. This could be memberships. You know, whatever the case may be. Boom, it drops in there. Now, what that does is eliminate the temptation to use all the money that's in here. Because this account now is empty. You got a profit account. Guess what? Your business is profitable today because you already took profit first. You have your tax account. Guess what? You ain't got to worry about scrambling at the end of the year to pay taxes. Anybody here been in business longer than a year? When it was tax time, did y'all have to figure out how y'all was going to pay taxes? Right? Good for you. I like you guys. They're like, mm-mm, you're good. So <laughs> a lot of folks come tax, come tax time like scrambling like, yo, how do I owe money? Well, you're going to owe. So now that's already allocated. Money is already set up in there. Anybody who's been in business for the past or over the past year, have you ever taken a paycheck? What was so crazy all the years I've been in business, I never took a paycheck. I told you all my story when I had my 25 units, almost a four million dollar real estate portfolio. When that rent came in, I was kicking it, <laughs> moving and grooving. Right. I didn't get, get myself a paycheck. I didn't put money towards operating expenses. And then your operating expense account is here. So guess what ends up happening? You actually have less money to spend, right? Because you've already allocated to these other three accounts, right? So what happens is, let's go back to that toothpaste analogy. If it's not a lot in the tube, you still gonna figure it out. That's when you get creative, that's when you get innovative, that's when you drill down and look at your systems and see, okay, something ain't right here. Because guess what? If you can't run your business, off of what's in this operating expense account, your business is upside down and you're part of that 83% one to two months going before you go bankrupt. So we're gonna now, if that's what's available, that's what's available. So now, you still ain't looked at a P&L statement. You still haven't looked at a cash flow revenue statement. Everybody got that app, everybody got that app to that bank on their phone, right? <laughs> Guess what you can spend? So when you think, hey, this is a good idea to spend $1,000 on this, but there's only 500 in here, you need to get innovative. Honest to God's truth, and my wife will tell you this, she's sitting in the back. I hit her up one day. We both working really hard, you know, growing our businesses, raising the babies and the whole nine. And I hit her up like, hey, what we got to eat at the house? Well, no, it's really, I'm really, I said, okay, I'm gonna go pick something up. I pulled up my phone, my app. I looked at my, op, I looked at my owner's comp. It was looking kind of shady. I said, you know what, baby? Call her back, go ahead and defrost that chicken. I'll be home in a little bit, right? because it's a behavior. Leverage the behavior that's already there. What was so crazy, it was all kind of stacks in the operating expense account, but guess what, that ain't my money. That's the business money. You see how now you're starting to separate that out, okay? So we now have our separate accounts, that's the core. We determine what your allocation percentages are. So your caps are your current allocation percentages. Your taps are your target allocation percentages. I'm going to send you guys a worksheet on the strength, so don't worry about that. But understand, everybody's allocation is different. So when we initially start you out, we do we actually do pull your P&L, we look at your cash flow, and see exactly where you're spending money. So we initially set you up, but then we also, too, set a rollout plan to try to get you to where you need to be, okay? So that's how we review a historical income statement and we start small with these. And the goal is to get to a certain target, right? And we improve this by quarter because I don't want you to try, you know what I'm saying, go into this and be like, okay, you're used to spending 100% of this. Now I'm telling you to allocate all these percentages over here and now your cash flow is super jacked up, right? And you're running out of money. So we ease you into it. So the process is ease you into it to get to that point. 
So then you get into a rhythm. So the paper came back in, right? So again, the money came in. What we're gonna do when that money comes in on the 10th and 25th, based on our percentages, so whether it's 3%, 5%, 20%, 80%. On the 10th and 25th, we're gonna move money. Now, my wife and I might be kinda, kinda odd, but this is kinda like our quality time twice a month sometime. Hey, she'll hit me like, hey, this was in my income account. She'll text it to me. And it's like, okay, she come in, we look at her percentages. All right, babe, move this, move this, move this. Okay, and this is what I'm moving. And so it's kinda, you know what I'm saying, we just have fun with it because we get excited about what's in the income account because we know how we're going to allocate it, right? So on the 10th and 25th, we make those movements. So for example, 50K in sales, and again, these are just random percentages here, but, that if, but 6% went to profit, which means we put 3,000 into the profit account. It's there. But guess what? Business is profitable. All right, 8% to tax. We ain't got to worry about scrambling to pay the tax, man. You know why? We already set it aside. Owners come. Pay yourself some paper, right? This is where you're going to go out and this is where you're going to your, have your personal spending. Operating expense. Plenty of money in there to operate the business. All right? Fair. Yes? Good question now. So the 50000 Mm-hmm. has that come in this time this season? From the first through the tenth. Yeah. The Great question. That's first through the tenth. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Let's say close the business, then you say, all right, cool. This is the day. Okay. Yep. On the tenth and the twenty fifth is on our calendars. Tenth and twenty fifth, we moving money. So this sometimes be kind of shady. And again, in full transparency with you, you know, I had my t on my tenth in March. Shoot, this wasn't fifty. It was eight hundred. I still made my percentages. And then on the 25th, I, mean, I did all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I did okay. So it was higher. But it's not a matter of what's, how much is there. It's getting a habit of those percentages. Yep. The first time I did this, mind blown. The quarterly process. So you've been moving money on the 10th and the 25th, right? You're rocking. Our quarterly process is this. The money that you had set aside in the taxes, pay them quarterly taxes. You're already ahead of it, right? Now, also, too, you've built up crazy money in a profit account. So what do you do with that profit? So what we'll typically do is take 50 percent of whatever is in this account. So if we go back to that previous gain is 3000 in the profit account, right? 50 percent of that is a profit distribution. OK, let me put it in terms that you understand here. So has anybody ever heard of a stock dividend? You ever heard somebody say like, oh, I got dividends from my stock, oh, yeah, yeah. right? So all a stock dividend is, to keep it 100 with you, is if you're you know, a, a publicly traded company, so let's say that you're a General Electric, and they pay out a, you know, a dividend every quarter. Their profit sharing with you, that dividend check that you receive is part of their profits that they're sharing with you, right? Because you invested in the company you get to share in the profits. That's what a dividend check is, all right? What you gotta get your head wrapped around is that you and your business are not the same people. Your business is your business and you are you, okay? So the same way that that company, that GE is writing that dividend check and you get that dividend check in the mail, you be like, oh, this is kind of dope, you know what I'm saying, boom. If you ever got a dividend check, even if it's for five bucks, you're like, shoot, I'm gonna go ahead and buy a cup of coffee or whatever the case may be, right? Well, we actually do another, uh, we actually do a, 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 a distribution out of the profit. So if it's $3,000 in this account, 1,500 comes out as a distribution. So if you're paid by a publicly traded company and they give you a reward for investing in the company, who else has invested more in your business? Who's invested more in your business? Nobody, no, ain't nobody invested more in your business than you have. Guess what, you got your little profit distribution. So if it was $3,000, you get 1,500 bucks. Now what you do with that 1,500 bucks depends on your situation. If you got some debt, take that 1,500, 
Let's throw it on some deck. Get that knocked out. That's a whole nother conversation. But let's say we don't really have a debt situation. Use that 1500 for something special. So what I was able to do, and my wife, bless her heart, she's been with me through the ups and downs and, and broke and, and the whole nine and hold, holding the fort down and, and, and all of that. This past Christmas, I surprised her with a trip to Mexico. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Maya Riviera to be exact. Yes. <laughs> That's a soft flex. You know, that, 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 that's, that's, that's what we call a soft. That, that's a soft flex. That ain't like extra hard, but just, you know, whatever. <laughs> but guess what? So I had this travel card. I threw it on the card. I got some points. And then I paid off half of that trip with the profit distribution. It didn't affect my owner's count. It didn't affect the health of my business. And it sure didn't affect my taxes. And that's just a good look. OK, so. That's how that's moving. And then example, obviously, I, uh, I don't you can tell I don't really do a whole bunch of PowerPoints because I did this at the very beginning. But in, nonetheless, so that's your profit first piece. Right. So now. How much time do we have, y'all? Oh, we good on time. Can they say I got you guys to like nine o'clock, right? No, nah. no, your sister like, nah, 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 bro. She's like, she like, you cool, but you ain't that cool. We're going to get up out of here. All right, here's the fun part. What is the best way to invest profit? Bet. So, you got your profit account, right? Every quarter, you're taking a distribution from the profit, but you're only taking how much? Half. Half. So, at the end of the year, you got money still in the profit account because you ain't touched it, right? Now, let's figure out what's the best way to invest it. Do we take that money and invest it into a retirement plan so you can get some additional tax deductions? Do we take that and invest it in more material, you know what I'm saying, or something that's going to help grow the business? Do you take that in? So now we take that last distribution at the very end of the year and decide what we want to do with it. My thing is this. <clears throat> You've already had fun with the money for the going throughout the year, right? With the 50% distributions, vacations, whatever, whatever the case may be. With this money, how you invest that profit, always go back to ROI. Unfortunately, if you've been around me long enough, I use it all the time. My daughters might be able to tell you what ROI is. Return on investment. A lot of times we take on debts and spend money or not even just money, just kind of putting my coaching hat on, where we invest our time in people is are you getting a good return on investment on being here? I hope you say, yeah, but you could have been someplace Netflix and chilling. You invested that time. What was the return on the investment? Right. So if you're looking to invest a profit, you always want to do what I call a ROI analysis. Where am I getting the best return on my investment? OK. Who good question right here. How to budget and savings while bootstrapping your business. Let's go to this operating expense account. So you're going to have monies flowing in. You're going to have some good, good, uh, you know, first to the tenths. You have some bad 11th through the 25th, whatever the case may be. Right. But you're going to have money in here. When I work with my clients, we immediately do a sprint to get to at least one month of operating expenses. So everybody raised their hand in here and said they, they have a business. If I was to pull all y'all into a corner over here and say, yo, how much money down to the dollar do you need to operate your business per month? 90% of entrepreneurs cannot answer that question. You know what I'm saying, right? You know what I'm saying? Be, right, right. They're like, mm, I ain't got that one, right? You know what I'm saying? So think about that for a second. How in the world do you not know how much it costs to run your business. So that's marketing, memberships, you know, your apps on your phone, Google, you know what I'm saying, suite. If you use that to run your business, your cell phone bill, if it's used to run your business, you should leave out of here today, get you a pencil or paper or Excel spreadsheet and list out what are my monthly expenses for my business, not your personal, for your business, you need to know down to a dollar what my expenses are. Because if you know that, so let's say 
You're similar to me. When I ran my numbers on, I came up to being about 3,500. I need 3,500 just for my business to stay afloat. That ain't even to make money. That's just what I need. So my immediate sprint was to get to that number ASAP. And then me, financial advisor had going on. I want three months of that. So that puts me at about 10.5. So I want to keep 10.5 in, my bad, in this account at all times. Okay. Now, it gets below that. That's cool. But how much peace of mind would you have if you knew that if you didn't sell any T-shirts or any massages or whatever the case may be for a month, that you got three months of your business set up already? You move different. You sleep better. Because everybody entrepreneur here, I done had a lot of sleepless nights. I, I, I still have them. My wife would tell you. I'll wake up at 2.30, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning looking at that, uh, that, that, looking at that app. Did that, direct, did that direct deposit hit? Stop playing with me right now. <laughs> Calling somebody, hey, it ain't hit. It's 5.30, I don't see it. What is up, email, what's going on? Where's my money, right? So, so <laughs> going, <laughs> going back to this, how you deal with the savings is you get a cushion in here. And now that you have that cushion in there, you know what you need to have. Ideally, you want to get to three months, but even if you don't get to three months, get to two months, but definitely get to that one month knowing that if you just have a bust month, you still got enough to keep the business afloat. That makes sense? And you can use that for your personal expenses, personal finances as well. What's the best uh, route to branding and making a biz logo? I can't answer this one. Uh, my man in the back right there. He does my websites and, 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 and logos and branding. Talk, talk to him about it. But make it something that you're proud of, right? You know what I'm saying? When you look at it, you, you want to flex on it. Be like, yeah, you see the logo. It's fire. You know what I'm saying? So make it represent you. And it's funny because I go back to like when I said, I, I said I'm going 100% entrepreneur. My logo has changed probably 10 times, right? And it's going to continue to change. So I would just say, you know, have something that speaks to you, but also to talk to a professional because there's plays on colors and things of that nature, which though I can't really answer this question, I'll say this. Talk to a professional, which you think might be hot fire, might turn some other people, turn people off, you know what I'm saying? So you want to know who your target market is, your niche market is, and make sure that your logo can speak to them. What does my revenue do for me? No worries. So your revenue is your money that's coming in, okay? So that's money that's flowing in. If you had a $2,000 sale, that's revenue, right? Cash flow and revenue ain't the same because you run, look at your cash flow, you might have 2,000 coming in, but if you spent 3,000 on the back end, you're in a negative cash flow scenario, right? So unfortunately, when we think about revenue, we like, shh, Man, I brought in 10 stacks, but homie, 12 went out the door. We not good. So we, we, need, to, we need to do something different with that, okay? So, so understand, revenue is just simply the money that came in. We still gotta pay expenses, cover payroll, pay all the other you know, fixed debts and things of that nature. So that's how that works. So, ooh, ooh, okay, somebody going extra hard in the paint. How? How do my kid, how do I cut my kids a check for working the family business, savings for college, car, and investments? So this would definitely be a sit-down consultation because we talked earlier about opinions, information, and advice. Right. But there are ways that you can actually compensate a minor for working your business and turn around and throw it into an IRA for them and some things along those lines. So there's ways to get that done. Was that, was that yours? Yeah. So, so don't, there's definitely, you can definitely do that. So you want to make sure that we have the right tax person on deck with us, you know what I'm saying, just to make sure we don't stay, we stay, out, stay out the way with the IRS. But yeah, that is definitely a strategy. It's a strategy I haven't even implemented yet personally, but I'm very, very familiar with it. Yep, for sure. So something to think about, you know, putting the kids on the payroll. And if you don't understand the way IRAs work, well, one, if you put the kid on the payroll, they're now... part of the operating expense, right? So that's an expense that went out. That just reduced your income and the business revenue, your business income, right? You throw it into, you give it to the kids, so now the kids got paid, but then you throw the money into an IRA, it just became another tax deduction. Ooh, a lot of different ways to play this game. A lot of, way to, a lot of different ways to play this game. All right, good question. 
When in the startup phase, how do you use other people's money to fund your business? Side note, uh, our family business making, per, okay, making bracelets and shirts and things of that nature. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, when you're starting your business out, you're gonna probably have to bootstrap, right? So that means that bootstrap, you know what I'm saying, put yourself up from your bootstrap, like you're literally gonna probably have to fund it yourself. Now you're gonna have people who love you and dig you and wanna get behind your mission, right? When clients come to me and be like, hey, ooh, ooh, when, when, you're good. When um, uh, clients come to me, it's like, hey, so I, I got this, I wanna invest in my, in, in my cousin's business or whatever the case may be. My thing is, okay, are you investing in the business or are you giving them a loan? They're not the same. Right. Let's keep that 100. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So somebody, somebody come to us and be like, yo, I want you to invest in the business. Yeah, we gonna do this note, right? We gonna have the terms written on it. I'm gonna have some recourse. If I don't get our, get our paper in 12 months, we gonna come and take your equipment. Like it's in there, so that's a loan. So now that's a loan. Then you have somebody who's investing in your business. Well, if they're investing in your business, let's go back to Shark Tank, my man Damon John over at FUBU, they want to know what's the return on their investment. So if they're giving you $10,000, you need to be prepared to say, hey, you're going to be this percentage equity owner in the business, right? So first, let's get crystal clear on that. Is it a loan or are they now a owner in the business? And if they're owning the business, what percentage of ownership are you giving them? So things to kind of consider in that whole piece. And then you have some people, you know what I'm saying, just family, you know, moms and pops, grandma, and they love you, throw some money at you, right? But if, you, if, if that person were to come to me, I'm gonna go back to paperwork. What paperwork do we have? Is this a loan? Is it an equity position? What's the recourse? Things to consider with that, okay? Should you pay yourself? Y'all got the answer to that already, right? With that owner's compact, paycheck. You only got $20? You, you, can't, you, you, can't, you can't go pick that dinner up, go, go defrost that chicken, right? right? Bacon defrost real early, real quick, you know what I'm saying? Just put some hot water on it, just do that. Do that for the night, yes ma'am. question for that, piggyback uh, on that question. Yeah. Um, so the percentage you gave me, you know, you said yeah, that was just a number. Yeah. It really has to, is there a certain scale to follow? I mean, it depends on your business as well. Yep. Um, like, you know, 83% would be probably like too much for somebody. Absolutely. Or, because, or I don't need that much for operating a month, you know, so Every, I guess you have to play with numbers for a couple months. Well, here's the deal. When we send people through that, and I don't have a slide for that, but that's a great question. I probably put a slide, we had to slide up there. We have target allocations for businesses based upon their revenue. So a business that's doing 250000 and less, there's the target allocation that we're shooting for. Off the top of my head, I believe that might be like 5% in profit, 15% in taxes, 30% in operating expenses, and 50. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, exactly. So, those target allocations to your question is based upon how much, how much revenue, the, the top line revenue that the business is doing. So, again, I'm giving you guys information, but don't use those numbers because those numbers are just random numbers we put up there. I like this one right here. If you could do it all over again, how would you start? <clears throat> Man, I could do like an hour presentation on this, but y'all said only got y'all at 8.30, right? <laughs> I know we're almost over. So check, if I, if I could do it all over again, that coach that I hired back two, two or so years ago, I would have hired him on the front end. I just didn't know, you know what I'm saying? I knew I had some savvy, I mean, shoot, I'm a financial advisor. That means absolutely nothing. That just means I understand product. That don't mean you understand how to grow a business, right? So I would have hired a business coach. And let's, let's make sure I, I, I give you a difference between coach and mentor. They're different. A lot of people kind of use them interchangeably. It drives me crazy. So your mentor is somebody you got this personal relationship with who wants to see you win. But if you broke as a joke, they still sleep okay at night. <laughs> For real. That's your mentor, right? Your coach is somebody that you paid, right? They're accountable to you winning, you know what I'm saying? Their relationship and their revenue is based upon your success, which means they have another level of vested interest in seeing you win. So I paid a coach a nice chunk of paper for a 90 day program, which high side being 2020 was the best money I've ever spent with respects to my business. If I, if I had it to do all over again, 
hired that coach on the front end. All about team, saving time, energy, and money. Yep. And last question we have here, group, is how much are your coaching services? I have packages as well. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this profit first piece that I do right here. So um, my business has uh, is one house, two sides to the house. The one side of the house is your you know, financial planning, wealth creation services. So the stocks, the bonds, the insurance, the retirement accounts, all of that. The other side of the house uh, is this right here. I bring entrepreneurs in, it used, to, it used to be a 90 day program, we broke it down to 60 days. Now we're looking at trying to just do uh, three, six and 12 month, excuse me, coaching packages uh, where we make sure that you're profitable. So as uh, uh, Chandrita said, I'm not gonna be the person to tell you how to do your job, you know what I'm saying, grow your business. Like, I'm not gonna tell my wife, well babe, if you do this type of massage, that's not gonna be our conversation. But we are gonna be like, okay, let's get these systems set up. This is the retirement account you need to get the most tax deduction. We also need this tax-free money and we get, and everything is coming off of uh, our profit first scenario. So yes, I offer that as well. Mm -hmm. Cool, and from a price standpoint, we can talk about it. Everybody's situation is different. Yes, sir. Yep. <laughs> Mm -hmm, cool. All right, y'all. So uh, any other questions? No. Well, I got a question for y'all. We talked about ROI, return on investment. Was this a good ROI on your time? Where? Oh, my bad. I'm tripping. I always forget this part because I'll be so hyped. Uh, yo, go here. Get your free gift. Go to perryjeffries.com slash profit first. I'll send some materials over to you. Uh, and then also to... Um, We'll get you enrolled into my newsletter that comes out kind of when I feel like bringing it out. Um, but it's you're pretty consistent for the most part. But definitely go here. I'll send you the first couple of chapters of that profit first and also to some other materials. And if you want to give me your business card, I can do that, too, and, and, and kind of enroll you that way. Oh, my bad. Y'all still need that? No E in between the J-E-F-F. -F, that's R-I-E-S. No E. And make sure you check us out on Fox 28, uh, Financially Fit Fridays. Ashley, you guys just got to. I saw this uh, today. Oh, say what? word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. Yep. Um, make sure you check us out. You guys got a preview to this. I'm actually doing this uh, this Friday. Just the short four minute version of it. Yeah. Cool. I just want to ask you, you said if I have a business account, mm -hmm. I have five buckets, mm -hmm. right? Income is a savings bucket. Yep. Profit is a savings bucket. Yep. Taxes are a savings bucket. Yep. Owner's comp is a checking budget. Yep. Or a bucket, yeah. And then Check. operator. Check. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. You Thank got you, it. Sir. Yep. And I'll send you guys, if you guys are rolling that, I'll send you the, um, the uh, profit first overview. All right. Sis, that's all I got, mama. Yes, my name is Chance Pounds, uh, owner of Dr. Flood, a water damage, water restoration company. Uh, today's meeting with Jeffrey was definitely helpful. Um, what I learned, not so much what I learned, but what he emphasized, the key points of having different accounts, different buckets. Um, I think that's very important. And actually what I learned, just a strategy, paradigm shift, and how I look at the money that I'm receiving uh, and what he emphasized was putting profits first. And that's going to give me a whole different way of looking at the business, the money I'm receiving it, allocating the funds appropriately. And I would say yes, I, I learned a lot. The ROI uh, with time spent here definitely was well worth it. I'm definitely thankful. Hi, I'm Brittany Holland Banks. Um, I attended the cash flow revenue class. Um, what I really liked about the class is that he explained on how you should separate your profit. Um, it shouldn't all go into just self-profit. It should go into your taxes, um, your employees, your savings, your, uh, and of course, you know you need to pay yourself. So I thought that was really interesting because I didn't know that um, to separate my taxes. I never thought about that. So that was the key point for me today.